Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm bringing you an old project but with new um, papers, products, colours, the whole works. Um, it's my mini wine bottle box. Um, as I said, it is one I made 18 months, two years ago when I started my videos. Um, I was getting a bit nostal nostalgic watching the old videos and cringing slightly at my ability to try and give measurements and stuff. Um, I was also aware that in the early days I didn't give centimetre measurements either so I thought it would be really nice to remake this and give you the centimetres. Um, and I've also made this a festive one. Obviously as you can see I've used this fabulous sen uh, sentiment which made me laugh when I saw good cheer and I just thought that makes me think of cheers and drinking wine so that's why I chose that one. A couple of beautiful little sprigs on the side here just to add it. Um, I have used Noble Peacock rhinestones but you can use the holiday ones or whatever you want to really. Um, but yeah I just quite liked it and I thought I'm going to remake that so I have. So to start off with then strip of cardstock, uh, sorry DSP, such a habit to say cardstock, strip of DSP and again I've used this Noble Peacock because it is thick, if you were to use, I'm just going to grab another one, if you were to use the paper you'd probably need to use cardstock and then add your layers of DSP for strength because the paper wouldn't really be strong enough. So I'm using this one because it is quite sturdy this measures, <coughs> excuse me, this measures 11 and a half by 2 inches, which is 29.5 by 5 centimetres. So to start off with this one, on the long side, where's my scoring tool? On the long side, we are simply going to score. Now, if you have a pattern, you want your pattern running from left to right. So obviously that's the way up I want my box. So I need my paper running from left to right, okay, my pattern. Um, and I'm simply going to score at two and four inches, and that's it. So that will be five and ten, there's the only one I've not written down, five and ten centimetres. Let me double check. Yes, five and ten centimetres. And then you're just going to pop that off to one side. You then need two pieces that are going to be your sides, okay? And these measure eight and a half by four. Again, make sure your pattern is running the correct way. So eight and a half is the length, four is the width, and that's uh, 21 and a half by 10 and a half centimeters. On the short side, on both pieces, we're going to score at one and three inches. And that will be 2.5 and 7.5 centimetres. So one and three. And then again, we're going to rotate with our pattern running from left to right. And we're going to, no, sorry, scratch that. With your pattern running from right to left this time, we're going to score at seven and a half, which is 19 centimetres. So again, your pattern's running the opposite way, seven and a half or 19 centimetres. Okay, pop that to one side. <coughs> and then we're going to fold and burnish these lovely score lines. Now, with this paper, I am very mindful that sometimes it can crack. So I am actually doing it very gently. And you can see, look, I'm not even going all the way down with it. I'm just gently encouraging it that that's the way I want it to fold. I'm not pressing hard and really pushing those score lines because I don't want this paper to crack. So I'm just giving it a gentle, and it's enough. It's enough for what I need. So we'll do that with all of those score lines on both of the sides. And also your long piece here. So we don't need to do any cutting with this. We're just going to fold and burnish and lay that to one side for a moment. So back in with our sides here, we're going to start off by trimming the bottom as we need it. So these two squares are going away completely. So we're just going to cut in and I'm actually going to cut a wedge that side too. Okay, so a wedge to the bottom and straight across the top there. I'm going to do that with both of the side pieces. So we're just cutting 
across and cutting a wedge and I will show you in just a second. So they're still identical pieces so we still have these bottom pieces and then what we need to do is create these sloping sides. Okay so with your pencil and your ruler take one piece and it doesn't matter which side you choose whether you choose the left score line or the right I'm going to go with the right we need to measure up two inches to the side which will be five centimeters and just pop a little mark then with your ruler and that mark you're going to go straight across the main center piece up to that top corner okay so I'm going to do the same again but this time I need to do the opposite side okay so measuring up two inches or five centimeters a little mark and then from that mark right up across the main piece to the top corner so you should have opposite angles okay I'm just going to grab my large scissors for this so when you come to do this what you want to do is cut across to that mark okay then you want to cut quite a deep wedge across there okay and then now you can use your trimmer if you find it more comfortable and you want a straight line if you're not very good with cutting a long line like this if this gets in your way just cut it out of the way because you don't need it and then all the way to that top corner okay and then I'm going to do exactly the same with the opposite side so cutting across to that mark then quite a deep wedge and then I'm going to cut and if you find it better again and I said this in my last video if you find it better going from the top then by all means go from the top it doesn't need to be a precise cut as long as you're not weaving in and out and it looks like a one year old's done it I'd say a two year old but they're probably quite uh, good at this sort of stuff <laughs> so you'll have opposites now just like that flip them over and on these long pieces here we're going to add some adhesive now again if you want to use wet glue you can I'm using my old faithful tear and tape just because I need it to stick so that I can show you the rest so I'm running two strips down just because I want that to hold in place I'm going to do exactly the same for this one straight down the sides there and while I'm here I'm actually going to stick a piece across there and a piece across there okay so I'm adding it across that bottom tab and that side piece there too so bone folder over that tear and tape make sure it's stuck down nicely one piece to start with I'm going to take the backing off and then the long piece that we had to start with with these two score lines I'm simply flipping it over and I'm going to line this furthest score line here and obviously the top with the top and the score excuse me the score line that I've created here goes along this edge so I'm simply lining it all up just like that and obviously I'm going to do exactly the same now with the other side lay this one down in fact I find this one easier to do this way around now because I've got more to hold on to and I'm just going to line that score line up the top and the vertical score line and that's that one done so those are my two pieces slightly wonky but it's okay I have no overlapping so we're good now this looks a little bit unsightly so I want to add a panel 
on the inside just to bring that DSP all together again and this panel is just literally under it's not even an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch under it's literally just a fraction under two by seven and a half which is 4.9 by 19 um, the length of it obviously if you are a little bit short it shouldn't matter too much because it will be hidden inside the box again that's my tear and tape added on take my backing off and it is easier to do this bit at this stage take my backing off and again making sure you've got your DSP running the correct way I'm literally just putting this on the inside okay and as you can see now when it stands up it's all pretty and then you're just going to make the rest of this box up so I started with these sort of bottom pieces sorry for saying bottom again and literally just creating that box so just tucking those in whoops lining them up and again these side pieces here and just that one into there and this is where you will have made sure you've cut those pieces deep enough so that you don't get excess here and again just take that piece off and tuck that oops, inside and line it up and there's your box so I'm going to pop my wine bottle inside and I just need to do my label easiest bit so again I've got another strip this is two inches by six inches or 15 and a half by five and then again with your pattern running left to right I'm going to score at two inches which is five centimeters yes I don't know why I've put two and a half on my notes there but anyway five centimeters um, and then flip it over so you've got the underside grab your ruler and a pencil again and I'm marking the halfway point so for me it's one inch for my centimeter friends it'll be 2.5 um, one inch circle punch so I'm just now going to line up and make sure that that mark I've made is in the centre and pop that out I'm not going to bone fold this because I'm just happy for it to be folded like that and obviously now it will just sit nicely over your wine bottle and tuck in the bottom and then you just need to decorate it so I have the first frost again and this wonderful sentiment that I've lost here it is um, and I have my old olive that will coordinate with my DSP it's a bit wet I think so I'm just going to give that a quick clean so it's out of the way and then I have my everyday label punch here and I'm going quite close to the bottom because I want to use a post-it note because I need to go back in and make this just a fraction shorter so I'm taking that bit off the top and then I've completely forgotten to get my old olive card out so bear with me just a second while I rustle through all of my scraps here that was good to grab some old olive oops and I just literally need another punch of that 
snail this without the post-it on the back. <laughs> get off, get off. Take that bit of post-it off, there we go, I don't want that. So I'm just snailing this onto here and I just want to make sure when I do this that the sides are level and that I also have an equal space, top and bottom. Okay, so that's that done. I then have my sprig punch and some of the gorgeous copper, sorry, champagne even, uh, glimmer paper, which I'm just going to punch a couple of those out from. And then on the back, we're simply going to add a couple of dimensionals. Glue dots to adhere my little sprigs. So one there and one there. And then these are going to go, make sure my sentiment's the right way round. These are just going to sit, oops, poking out of the side here and then I've just finally I have my peacock rhinestones and as I said you can use the holiday ones there is a lovely selection with both both colours so you could use either or but I'm sticking with what I already have here which is the peacock ones just add a couple of gems and then pop your sentiment on and I'm hoping that this was a slightly better attempt than my previous one but I really like those and I think they'll be a great gift for someone who you're struggling to find a present for um, and you could obviously add a ribbon you could put one of those beautiful little rosettes on the top um, you know the Christmas bows you could add all sorts to this or add one here, but I love it. And I hope you like my new old project. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.